you will be blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen. In fact, you have been blessed today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for this time that we have before you. As we stand before your altar today, your altar is a place where we come to repent. Then we come to repent and where you forgive us before you bring us into the Holy of Holies. So today we say, forgive us our trespasses, all those things that break interest between us and you. Forgive, O oh Lord, we pray. Who oh, bless us with hearing ears, seeing eyes. Speak to us and speak to us today. That your word will bring that transformation that is so needed in our lives. That your word may empower us more than we had when we came in yet. Oh Lord, that we may know that yes, we are visited with the Holy Spirit. That your name is glorified amongst us today. Empower us to take on the week through your word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today we continue with our message, Build the Church, that the Lord gave us this year. Build the Church. And as we often say, the church is not the four walls. It's not brick and mortar. The church is the people of God. The people of God. The born again people of God. Those that Jesus came and died for and who have received salvation. Those are the church. He said, build the church. In other words, equip them that they may stand in their place and then begin to do the work of the ministry for the Lord. What is the work of the ministry? Letting other people know that this Jesus Christ has truly finished our salvation. We just need to receive him and then be blessed and be transformed. That is the work of the church. So the Lord is saying to us, this year you want to focus on building up the people of God. So as a child of God, you want to build up yourself in the Lord. That is what the word is actually saying. Build up yourself in the Lord. So today we continue with our message. We are in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 7. We're going to look at 7 and 8 briefly today as we do the build each other. Before we can go one again, do a quick review of what we've done so far. The first one was return to me, the Lord said to the people. You've been on exile because you have sinned against me. 70 years you've been on exile. Because the Lord sent them on exile because of their sins against the Lord. Say, okay, now it's time for you to return. Your 70 years running out. And when you are returning, in part two, he told them that he will be the wall of fire around them. That means that in those days, the people were protecting themselves by great walls. If you go to ancient uh, cities today, whatever is left of ancient cities today, you will see some of the great, great walls that people build to protect themselves. But the Lord said to them, that is nothing compared to what he would, would do for them, that he will build a wall of fire. He himself will be a wall of fire for them. In other words, he will be protected against all their enemies. But he said, walk in my ways. In other words, if you walk in my ways, these things that I say to you shall be yours. Just like he's saying to us today, if you walk in my ways, what I say to you, what you see in the scriptures shall be yours. Unfortunately, the people are not trying to walk in the ways of the Lord. They are trying to find how to get to that stuff without walking in the ways of the Lord. They will turn around and say, why is this not working for me? But by the time we get to part four, he says that the things that they will achieve, they will achieve by his spirit. By his spirit, not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the Lord. If you and I will learn to depend and trust more on the spirit of the Lord, we will achieve more than we can imagine. Praise the Lord. In chapter, in by, by the time we got to part five, he says that it reminds us of sin. Even when you're going back, to the presence of the Lord. 
when you are now committing yourself to doing the will of the Lord, don't forget that sin is still a hindrance. Sin will still prevent you from achieving or from receiving your full blessings. And it reminded us about the flying screw, the flying screw of the woman in a basket that was being carried by angels to that place called Shina, a place spiritually as the seat of sin, where sinners will end up, so to speak. So it's telling us that we should not be part of that place. Our kingdom is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We are not being built, the house is not being built for us in Shina, but in heaven. Amen. Amen. And then in 6, the Lord reminds us that he will be the king and priest. For the first time we see that God has united the office of the king and the priest in one person, and that person was Jesus Christ. Before that, we had priests and kings separately. David was a king, he was not a priest. Samuel was a priest, he was not a king. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But in Jesus Christ, we see the unification of the two offices. And the Bible will tell us that for his kingdom there will be no end. He is our high priest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So today we come to part 7. And in part 7, we have the title, I will return to Zion. I will return to Zion. Now the Lord is telling them that now he is sending them back to the land of Israel from the place of their exile. He said, and I will meet you in the land of Zion. Praise the Lord. So when you and I begin to retrace our, back, our legs back, to our steps back to the Lord, we will not go to the Lord and not find the Lord. That is what the scripture is saying. When we return to him, he returns to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So today we're going to look at what remember he will return to Zion. And what is Zion to them? Zion is the city of God's blessing for his people. The city of God's place of authority. So we are going to start by looking at Zion. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at Zion. But before we enter that, I want us to look at a couple of things. Uh, let me see, maybe I should mention. Okay, so let's talk quickly about uh, Zion. So let me go back. Before I get to Zion, let me talk quickly about what the Lord was trying to remind them about when we saw, when we read the scripture this morning. The Lord told them that they were fasting. They were fasting because they asked, should they fast as they used to fast? It turns out that they were fasting, they used to fast a lot. In the fifth month, they will fast every year. They said, oh, we fasted for 70 years, every fifth month of the year, we, fast, we fasted for 70 years. Should we continue to fast this? The things are beginning to happen now. So we, from there we learn one thing, that fasting is not just a Christian thing. People have been fasting. Even unbelievers fast. Even people who worship idols fast also. So fasting is not uh, just a Christian thing, one thing. Another thing that we need to learn from here, they said they've been fasting, and the Lord said to them, were you really fasting for me? Were you fasting for me? You are fasting for yourself. Think about that for a minute. What does that mean, were you fasting for me? Today, we, the people, people, people go about fasting and they are just fasting and fasting. When they go see a prophet or something, they tell them, oh, you need to fast for five days, you need to fast for seven days, and this will happen for you. The Lord was trying to teach us something there. He said that they were not fasting for the Lord. They were fasting for themselves. We, go to, we fast today, we try to get something from God, so we start fasting. I want to fast for this, so fast for that, this will happen for you. It was that what fast was designed for. That was what the Lord was saying. 
The fasting is designed to bring us close to the Lord, not to get something from God. When they were fasting, people always fast when they have problems in their lives. But that is not what fasting is designed to do for us. Zechariah chapter 7, verses 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Say to all the people of the land, to the priests, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, during those 70 years, did you really fast for me? Did you really fast for me, says the word of God. We need to think about that. When we fast, are we really fasting for the Lord? What does it mean to fast for the Lord? Why are you fasting? This is why I tell people, whenever people are running around looking for somebody that will tell them, oh, your problem is you need to fast seven days, you need to fast six days. You might be missing the whole point of fasting. The focus should not be the problem, praise the Lord. The focus should be relationship with the Lord. If our Lord is really this powerful and this wise and this knowing, don't we realize that he also knows our problem even before we have the problem? He will take care of our needs, says the word. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all other things shall be added to you. They were just fasting because of their problem. They were not seeking God. When, when you hear the scripture, when people say like people are seeking God's hand instead of his face. This is why a lot of people who don't know the Lord still pray for something from the Lord. And this is why sometimes they get something that is not coming from the Lord. And they don't know the difference. Why? Because they don't know his face. I'm talking spiritually now. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the devil never comes to anybody to deceive somebody by being looking like what we think the devil looks like. The only person that can deceive you is somebody that you don't think will deceive you. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you think somebody will deceive you, you put a guy. If somebody coming to steal from you, you're going to... You know, if your money is here, you put your hand here just in case. I'm talking with the person. Because you think the person is about to steal from you. But if the person looks like he's about to give you money, you even bring your money to show that you have a little money in your pocket. And that's how we get deceived. We don't get deceived by the, this red devil with the pitchfork coming to destroy. They fasted not because they were seeking God. So God is saying, the Lord is saying to us, fast to seek God, not to solve your problem. Seventy years they were fasting, thinking that they were doing the right thing. And God was just watching them, saying, oh, let them do what they're doing. When the seventy years I gave them, aspires, I will come and help them. So that's something that we need to take from that. Praise the Lord. Amen. That we need to learn how to fast properly. In this church, we don't have a lot of fasting seasons. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But my thing is fasting should be a lifestyle. Once in a while, I'll tell you in each other that I fast every Friday. You know, a long time ago, somebody once said, how do you stay focused, you know? How do you stay in line and try to keep doing this for so many years and living your regular lifestyle? One thing, I believe the Lord wants us to live our regular lifestyle. Praise the Lord. Amen. What do I mean by regular lifestyle? I mean, living like a human being. You're right, you are a human being. You have family, if you have family. You have a job, which you should. He said, he who does not work should not may do what? Eat. So, we are supposed to work. But that should not stop us from worshiping our God. That's the point I'm trying to make. It should not take away from our relationship because without the Lord, we cannot work properly. We cannot live properly. Our family cannot, family relationship cannot be proper. So how do you keep doing it? 
I try to stay connected with the Lord as much as I can. That's the answer to that. And one of the ways I do it is by fasting once a week. I don't do any big religious thing when I fast. It just reminds me that, hey, I need to be connected with the Lord at that period. Praise the Lord. And he has helped me, and I'm very comfortable with it. Not to mention that there's uh, some physical benefit too. That was supposed to be a joke. When you fast every week, it helps your body too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But it's took more seriously, on a serious note, it helps me keep my mind on the Lord. You'll be surprised when you stay away from church one, two, three, four weeks, it becomes easier to stay away from church. That's just how life is. When you stay away from exercising one, two, three weeks, it becomes easier to stay away from exercising. The same thing with meditating in the Lord. If you neglect to keep working on your relationship with the Lord directly, directly, the reason I don't call you every day about Christ, 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 because you're supposed to talk to Jesus yourself too. Praise the Lord. Amen. You should not have a, a man in the middle between you and Jesus Christ. It should be a rela direct relationship. If you have that relationship, I have that relationship, we all have that relationship, we build a perfect, a more perfect church for the Lord. Because the perfect church is we, the people. I don't want to sound like a politician. I almost begin to sound like uh, you're the more perfect union and all that stuff. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So here the Lord tells them that uh, they fast not for the right reason, but when they obey the Lord, it actually is better than fasting to try to get their problems solved. If they will obey, we say obedience is better than sacrifice. Fasting is like sacrifice. When you obey the Lord, it's better than when you're trying to work hard to gain the uh, uh, face of the Lord or the hand of God or the uh, acceptance of the Lord. So let us go to the next scripture. Because this message is not really about fasting, it's about the Lord returning to Zion. Returning to Zion. Verse, verse 2 says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion. With great zeal, with great favor, I am zealous for her. I am zealous for Zion. Not that he is passionate for Zion. Just like our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ today is passionate for his church. He is passionate for his church and every entity in the church. In other words, if you, if you are born again, the Lord is passionate for you, wants to be passionate for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wants to be passionate for you. So we ask ourselves, what is Z Zion? Just a quick, what is Zion? What is Zion? When you hear Zion, if you've heard the people talk a lot, you hear people say something about Zion, Zion. What is Zion? What is Zion? The Zion we see uh, in the scriptures, uh, the Bible talks about Zion. Zion used to be a place, a land that uh, uh, David conquered, the Jebusite place that David conquered. It was a mountain uh, uh, fortress David conquered. And when he conquered it, he built his palace on top of that uh, mountain fortress. And then they called it Zion, right? Eventually, Zion expanded to include the temple of the Lord. They also expanded to include, they include all the land of uh, Israel. So when the Israelites talk about Zion, they're talking about homeland. Homeland. So when we talk about the Lord returning to Zion, you know, in the days of Israel, in Jerusalem was the seat of government for God's people. Spiritually, we have the Bible called the heavenly Jerusalem, which is still the seat of government for the Lord. So when he talks about returning to Zion, he's talking about returning to the seat of God's government. 
the central location spiritually where the throne of government of the Lord resides. It says, I will return to Zion. I am serious for Zion. I want Zion to be established in your hearts. That's what he was saying today. Just like he's saying to us today. He wants Zion to be established in our hearts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want us to look at uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 8 verse 3. It says, Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. So again, the Lord says to the people he will return. He said, I will return to where you are. And I will bring my blessing. I will bring my protection. I will make sure that you will know that I'm with you. Amen. 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 So when the Lord says, I will return to Zion, he also says something that we will use to pray today. Part of our message today is prayer time. We used to pray today in verse 8, I mean chapter 8. The Lord says prophetically to the, the, the Zechariah that he had a plan for the people when they come back to Jerusalem. And that plan is a plan of blessing. Amen? Amen. A plan of blessing. A plan of blessing. So we are going to go to prayers in a moment. Before that, I want us to see what the Lord said to us in the book of John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to be full or have it more abundantly. If you know your Lord the way your Lord wants you to know him, then you should expect abundant life. From your relationship with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You should expect it because that's what the Lord is expecting. But the, the problem is we keep trying to put the cat in front of the house. Seek me first, then I will add all things to you. People are running around looking for the Lord. The Lord said, No. You don't have to physically run around going to look for the Lord. For where yeah. you are, there I will be. Amen. 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 The Bible says the Lord is everywhere. It is up to us to understand these things. It says like, like the time of Zechariah, we have a promise of blessing from the Lord. The church, again, the church is you. The church is me. We have a promise of blessing from the Lord. And that blessing, we are going to use the book of Isaiah and Zechariah to connect with it today. Amen? Amen. Are you ready to pray today? Yes. Are you ready to pray today? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So like I said, we are going to pray from the book of Zechariah chapter 4, chapter 8. Let me see if I can pull this up a little. I guess I have to just sit down. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let us rise. Thank you. 
The Lord is offering them longevity and health. Longevity and health. Let us begin to pray and claim divine health from the Lord right now. Yes, it says, with long life and peace will I satisfy you. With long life and peace will I satisfy you. With long life and peace will I satisfy you. With long life and peace will I satisfy you. So say to him today, Lord, I receive from you. I trust that you can make me whole. You can keep me healthy. Despite anything that is happening in the world. Yes, Lord. Long life and peace I claim I receive from you. I will not be sick in the body. I will not be sick in the body. My life will not be full of sickness and disease. But I know that your body was broken, that mind will be made whole. So I receive divine healing right now. I receive divine healing for myself and for my family. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says it's not the power to be healed. It's not because we are great prayer, prayer warriors. It's because of the faith we have in Jesus Christ. So right now we say, in the name of Jesus, I am healthy. In the name of Jesus, my family is no sickness, no disease destroying us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command, I take authority over everything that wants to ruin my life today. The Bible says, it says that old men and old women, we will grow old in the name of Jesus. And not just grow old, but grow old and be healthy in the name of Jesus. Our minds are healthy in the name of Jesus. There are so many people troubled today. They are just running around mentally, not there. They are searching, always searching. Never understanding what they were actually looking for. Pray that we will not be wandering spirits. We will not be wandering spirits. We will have a settled spirit in the name of Jesus. A settled spirit with peace. With peace. With peace and joy. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. And point number three, the streets of the city shall be filled full of boys and girls playing in the streets. Time for prayer for our children. Children, time to pray for children. He said they will be full of boys and girls playing. He didn't say crying. He didn't say they will be sorrowful. He said they will be playing. When you are playing, you have fun, you have joy, you are healthy. I want us to begin to pray for the children that the Lord has brought into our lives. That they will be children filled of joy. Today we see children that are so, so distraught that they will carry God and start shooting other children. That will not be the portion of our children in the mighty name of Jesus. That devil that takes over the heart of the children will not come near our children. In Jesus' mighty name. Just pray, pray. In perfect health they will be. They will be, they will enjoy their youth. They will enjoy their youth. They will do well in school. Their heart will be mind, their mind and heart will be clean and clear. When they study, they will understand what they are studying. The plan of God for them will come to fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. In perfect health, they will live their life. Pray right now and say, anything, any sickness or disease, hitting, hitting in their body, oh, we declare them removed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Declare them healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And I say to all the children under the sound of my voice, you are healed in Jesus' mighty name. 
Sickness and disease will not be your portion. Sickness and disease will not run your life in the name of Jesus. Those who come to steal vision will not find your vision to steal in the name of Jesus. Those who come to steal joy will not come near you to steal your joy in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. Pray they will excel in the things they do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now the prayer point four. We are praying seven prayers. Point four says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west, and I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. This is prayer for protection. Prayer for protection. I want you to begin to declare the wall, the wall of fire around you and around your family. The wall of fire around you. God Himself is our wall of fire around us and around our family. Oh yes. The Bible says, God is for me, who can be against me? What can men do to me? We need, a, we need to get to a place where we will not be afraid of the enemy. Because we know the Lord is watching over us. Yes, I want you to spiritually visualize that wall. A great wall surrounding you and surrounding your family. A wall of fire that nothing can penetrate. Anything that comes near it gets burned up. Get burned up. That is the plan of the Lord. So we will not be afraid of the enemy. You will not be afraid of the arrows that fly by night. Some people cannot sleep at night because they think that the devil is coming to get them. That will not be your question. You will sleep. You will sleep because the Lord, the Lord is the one who is watching over your life. Right? In the mighty name of Jesus. Some people will not sleep because they think, oh, if they sleep, the enemy is working hard. Well, the Lord is working hard on our behalf. So say today, the wall of fire is over you and over your family, over your children. We will not be afraid. We will not be worried. The wall of fire is over your business, over your business. That business that the Lord has allowed you to start, committing to the Lord in the name of Jesus. For he can protect you. He can protect you, just as he's protecting your health, protecting your children, protecting everything that concerns you. In Jesus' name, Lord, be our protection, even as you have spoken to us through the book of Zechariah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Prayer number five. For the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give its fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these. The Lord has said that he will cause his, he will make his people receive blessings. He will make his people receive abundant blessings, overflowing blessings. Blessings that will not be enough fruit for you to receive. Blessings that he designed for you to help others. Begin to pray today. Say, Lord, I receive from you. I open my heart, I open my hands to you today. Bless me. Take me say, Lord, bless me and light my coast. Today is your turn to say, Lord, bless me and light my coast. Enlarge my coast. Make me a blessing to those who come near me. Make me a blessing. Bless me with what money can and what money cannot buy. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, bless me today. Make me a giver. For I cannot give that which I don't have. Give me, oh Lord, that I may have more than I need. That I can give to others. Begin to declare, say, Lord, bless the works of my hand. Bless my business. Bless my career. Bless the 
word of God that comes out of my mouth. Oh Lord, make me a blessing. Make me a giver of life to those who come around me. Make me somebody that gives hope to people around me, oh Lord. Oh Lord, bless me. As your word said, let the ground keep its increase on my behalf. When I sow, Lord, let it yield greatly. When I walk, Lord, let it produce beyond the gift that which I anticipate, oh Lord. He says, heaven shall give their due. Oh, let heaven open up for me, oh Lord. Let heaven open up for me for blessings. Oh Lord, bring increase into my house, oh Lord. Into my life, oh Lord. He said, I will cause the remnant of the people to possess all these things. Lord, make me possess these things. Make me possess these things. Favor me today, oh Lord. Favor me, O ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Seek so again. In these days I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do, do not fear. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in case for truth, justice, and peace. Today we want to pray that we will always stand for truth and justice. We will always stand for truth and justice. In this generation where truth is now relative, nothing is concrete anymore. People are making up the truth as they go along. Say that will not be my portion in Jesus' name. I will stand for what God calls truth. Even when it will cut me, even when the people will hate me for that, I will do what I know is right in the eye of my God. I will do what I know is right in the eye of my God. Even if all forsake me, but they forsook our Lord Jesus when he told them the truth, but he did not stop telling them the truth. Today say, I will stand for justice. I will stand for what is right. I will tell the truth when I need to, tell, when I need to tell the truth. Oh, the Bible says, stand for the truth. Our God is the God of truth. He said the spirit that we will have will be the spirit of truth. He said, I will exercise my right to speak the truth, even when it cuts me, in the name of Jesus. I will not, I will not bear false witness against people for, to take advantage. I will not bear false witness because of fear. I will tell the truth as the Lord gives me the right to say the truth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, we will pray. It says, Let none of you think evil in your hearts against your neighbor. Do not love the falsehood. For all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. We want to pray and reject wickedness. We want to pray and reject wickedness. We want to pray and reject wickedness. The Bible says the heart of man is wicked. It's evil and dangerously evil. It's wicked and dangerously evil, something to that effect. But the heart that the Lord has given us is a purified heart. It's a cleansed heart. It's a new heart. A heart of purity. A heart that hates wickedness. The Lord said, do not return to wickedness. Don't allow yourself to fall into wickedness. But there are so many out there who are wicked. They will do wickedness to you. And if you are not careful, they will draw you into wickedness. Today say, Lord, I want my heart to be reserved for purity. Purity. Purity and holiness. Purity and holiness. Oh, teach me to resist wickedness. Teach me to resist wickedness, oh Lord. That I may know you the way you know me, oh Lord. Oh, that my eyes may open up to things that are right. That my eyes may see holiness. Oh, that my heart may receive the joy of the Lord. Oh, the Bible says, for these things that I hate, the Lord hates wickedness. 
Let us paint wickedness like the Lord. Paint wickedness like the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us just begin to thank Him right now. Let us begin to thank the Lord for His goodness and for His mercy. That is not like our Lord. Oh, yes. Our Lord is the good God. He is the God that looks over out of out for his people. He is the God that takes care of his people. Even as we have prayed, let us seal that prayer with the seal of the blood of Jesus. Just say, I seal my prayer today with the blood of Jesus. The enemy has no access to this prayer. The enemy cannot change this prayer. The enemy cannot stop my prayer from getting to heaven. The enemy cannot stop my, my, the answer from God from coming to me because my prayer is covered with the blood of Jesus, my Lord and my God. And I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you adoration. Hallelujah. At this time, just say, I receive joy from the Lord. I receive peace. I know that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I know the Lord has blessed me. Oh, joy is my portion. Peace is my portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Even as you return to Jerusalem, I know you have returned to us. And we give you glory. We give you glory. We give you adoration. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give him a clap.